What's up guys, it's Dalmata here, and today we are going to be reacting to Adam Something's Dubai is a parody of the 21st century. Now, I'm not familiar with Adam Something, I don't think I've ever seen any of his content before, at least not that I can remember. Um, but I was recommended this video multiple times, and it seems to be a quite popular video. It's only a year old and it already has 10 million views. Um, probably the best video on his channel in terms of viewership, I would imagine, because he's only got a million subs. Only a million subs. Um, but, you know, for somebody with a million subs to have a 10 million view video, that's actually pretty insane. Um, let's see. Yeah, it is by far his most popular video. It's got like three times as much as his next most popular, which is this Energy Vault is a dumb idea. Um, so anyway, I'm not entirely sure what this is going to be talking about when it comes to Dubai. Probably a lot of the just ridiculous building projects and stuff that they have. Um, but in that sense, I would say it's that's more of a relic of the 20th century, but... Uh, maybe he'll go into that. I'm not entirely sure. Let's see. So, link to the original down below, and this is Dubai as a parody of the 21st century by Adam something. Let's jump into it. We're Dubai. Most of us picture... Oh, sorry. My video is still... My audio is really low from... I was playing uh, Switch earlier. Towering skyscrapers. Immense wealth. Police with Lamborghinis. Seven-star hotels with the absolute cream of society inside them. Also the Palm Islands, the World Islands, the Burj Khalifa, the Burj Al Arab. Futuristic symbols of incredible wealth. And so in light of all that, I'm here to make the case that Dubai, the Emirates and the Gulf countries in general are one of the worst places on the planet. Now this is a rather bold claim I realize, but it's one that I can substantiate fully. So let's take a look at what's really behind the glitz and glamour, the true face of Dubai and the Gulf countries. To better understand what's going on in a place like Dubai, first let's talk about Romania. <laughs> Okay, so what is he going to talk about here, right? Because, um, is he going to talk about how they get their wealth, which is largely from selling oil? Um, he could talk about their societal structure, which is kind of, I guess you could say it's like two to three tiered in a way, right? You have the actual, um, natives that live there that live pretty luxuriously, at least most of them. Um, or a large percentage of them, but then you also have the foreigners who are visiting and or working there from Western countries usually or, you know, wealthier people from non-Western countries. Um, and they kind of have, like, a, a different system for them. And then there's also, like, borderline, if not actual, slave labor is a big thing there. Uh, I think it's mostly comes from, like, India and Bangladesh and Pakistan. Um so then obviously you have like, you know, th that's different for those three, or maybe he's just going to talk about the combined, you know, factor of those three, right? And the massive wealth inequality between those. But, um, I don't even, yeah, I, I, it'll be interesting to see like where he goes with this. <laughs> In the decades following World War II, Bucharest, the capital, came to face the same problem as many Eastern European capitals did at the time. As urbanization increased and huge residential areas were built out, the need arose for new, high-capacity public transportation. And so Nicola Ceaușescu, the dictator of Romania back in the day, gave out the order to construct a metro line. And so the engineers created a line proposal and presented it to him. And then Ceaușescu was like, no, I will design the route personally. Uh -huh. And so the former shoemaker assistant, who also called himself the genius of the Carpathians, I am not making this up, <laughs> redesigned the entire metro line to have it run along the river underneath. Yes, along. But Nicola Ceausescu's wife, Elena Ceausescu, a former textile factory worker, also got her fair share of planning. Reportedly, when the planners presented the final version of the metro line to the Ceausescu couple, Elena Ceausescu reportedly asked why the metro would stop inside the inner city at Piata Romana, inquiring what kind of factories there are. The planners told her there aren't any factories, but there is the Bucharest University of Economics where there are lots of students. Hearing that, Elena Ceausescu reportedly said, Students? They've gotten fat. They grew a belly. They should walk. No station at Romana. Let them walk. And so, since Nicola... <laughs> it's like the, this is like the Romanian version of let them eat cake. Let them walk. Um, honestly, that's kind of funny. It's kind of stupid, but it, like it's such a stupid reasoning. But it's also kind of funny. Um, yeah, like why wouldn't you have? Like I would assume you'd want it to go to high, all the high density areas, right? Like obviously, the, having it go to the factories also makes sense. But that's just like why. <laughs> 
While Ceausescu added nothing to that and nobody else dared to oppose his wife, the station was axed from the plans. But of course everyone outside of the dictator power couple knew that this was fucking stupid. And so the engineers, having enough foresight, decided to build the station in secret, banking on the fact that they would need to build a station there anyway due to future public pressure. That's and hilarious. They were correct. The end result was this ridiculous and dangerously narrow station, since the engineers couldn't build a normal station hall, since they had to disguise their little secret project as regular tunnel boring. And so the moral of the story is, smooth brain dictator plus construction equals dumb shit. Mm -hmm. And boy, Fair. what a perfect segue this is to the video's actual subject, Dubai. Okay, so yeah, obviously, I'm, I'm guessing a big factor that he's going to be talking about here is these islands, which from my understanding, they're like eroding away now, and they're only like, what, 15, 20 years old? The city of Dubai is a fucking joke. It's a tasteless parody of everything wrong with modern humanity. And so why do I say that? Let's go through it, shall we? The momentum to idiocy. Now, in my video about skyscrapers, I have already talked about the Burj Khalifa. It's a big, dumb tower of glass and steel stuck in the middle of the desert, serving no other purpose than a petrol dollar fuel dick measuring contest. And the building even has its own poem about itself. Like, I, I am the power that lifts the world's head proudly skyward, surpassing limits and expectations. Rising gracefully from the desert and honoring the city with a new glow, I am extraordinary union of engineering and art with every detail carefully considered and beautifully crafted. I am the life force of collective aspirations and the aesthetic union of many cultures. I stimulate dreams, stir emotions, and awaken creativity. I am the, the magnet that attracts the wide-eyed tourist, eagerly catching their postcard moment for this, uh, the center for the world's finest shopping, dining, entertainment, and a home for the world's elite. Just the fact that they put, like, the world's elite in that is just hilarious. Like, because that's, like, them identifying themselves as the world's elite, right? Which, I mean, it's true, but it's, like, have some humility. <laughs> like, <laughs> I am the heart of the city, and it's people, the marker that defines uh, MRs, I'm probably mispronouncing that, ambition in Dubai is a shining dream. More than just a moment in time, I define moments for future generations. I am a Burj Khalifa. I'm assuming this is a better poem in its other language, right? Like, Arabic or whatever. Um... Because in English, it's kind of a shit poem. Was it? I hope it wasn't originally written in English, but it wouldn't surprise me. Like, seriously, how pretentious can you get? I, I know. I am the life force of collective aspirations and the aesthetic union of many cultures. I simulate dreams, stir emotions, and... What the hell is that noise? Honestly, oh, the no, self-identifying as the world trucks. elite. Yeah, did you know that the Burj Khalifa isn't connected to its sewage system? Oh, I have so heard about this. every single day, a huge line of poop trucks have to queue up next to the building and suck out all the poop. So, Amor's ambition and Dubai's shining dream included the world's tallest skyscraper, but not a sewer system. And besides, I've talked about this before in the skyscrapers video, there's actually not much point to building a skyscraper. Like, the only situation where it might make sense is when you're physically out of space. But trust me, Dubai does not have this problem. Which ties into the next suspects. Soon to be Atlantis. Okay, is this going to be about the islands? This I am well aware of. Dubai's palm islands yeah. are the OG symbols of the city. The construction of the first one, the Palm Jumeirah, started in 2001, if you can believe that. And according to Google's satellite images, it's still not finished, it's still getting built out. And just for good measure, let's take a look at what they actually built here. I mean, these things do look nice from space, but what are they really, from up close and personal? Well, the stem is an eight-lane urban freeway and the leaves are just individual suburban streets. Oh, and there's also a monorail in the middle. Oh, and between The Point and Nakheel Mall, there are no stations. So then, how do people living on the leaves get on this thing? Well, it's a rhetorical question, of course. Just like the real suburbs in America, this thing was built around cars. And the second palm, the Jebel Ali, will be more the same. And then there are the World Islands, of course, which are just a complex of tiny islands for the ultra-rich and their villas. And, oh my god, this looks outright post-apocalyptic, Jesus Christ. Oh, and there's a third palm under construction if the two weren't enough. Oh, and by the way, the sand they use for the palms is not desert sand. They can't use it because the grains are too big. Instead, they have to get the sand from the sea floor. And they achieve this by sucking it up with these big tanker ships. And uh, 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 that's actually pretty common. Like, a lot of places do this. Um, but yeah, obviously they do a better job because it's not going away anywhere else that I'm aware of. It might be, but... 
and uh, also annihilating acres of marine life in the process. Oh, and by the way, these palm islands were built on top of natural coral reefs, which they just ended oh. up basically burying. Oh, and according to NASA measurements, all these islands are sinking at a rate of 5 millimeters per year. And by the way, have you heard about this thing called the rising sea levels? According to the Environment Agency Abu Dhabi, under the most severe climate change scenario, nearly all of Dubai, including the Palm Islands, would be underwater. Alright, so let me get this straight. You had all the money and power in the world to create anything, and you have paid money to annihilate a coral reef to build a sinking suburb on top of it. Perhaps I treated you too harshly. <laughs> and here's the kicker about these islands. <laughs> That's right, I'm still not done. Why build them on the sea to begin with? I mean, you have the desert. You have all the space you will ever need. So why not just build the palms inverted into the land? You know, having the actual body of the palm not out of sand but out of water. It would look just as impressive from space and it wouldn't even demolish all the aquatic life. Uh, hang on a second, they did do something like this already, just below the palm tree. And oh no, these are American style suburbs, oh man. I can't believe it, they took the worst urbanism practices from the US and they implemented it one to one. And we actually have all the circles of urban- I don't understand people's hatred of suburbs. Like, I would never want to live in a city in general, so, like, I would not want to live in a suburb. But, like, for people who already live in a city, I do not get the hatred of the suburbs. Like, that is just such a weird thing to me. Urbanism hell in here. Copy-paste housing, cold as ex, giant highways cutting through the area, no public transport. Okay, yeah, the copy-paste housing is pretty disgusting. I, I hate when they do that. But, like, that's, you know, if you have the money, you can not have a copy-paste house. But, um... That part I agree with, but like the like the the road layouts and stuff, I just don't I don't understand people's hatred for it. Like, and this is like such a European thing I hear all the time from Europeans. It's like, oh, your your country is designed for cars. Your country is designed for cars. I say this about the states all the time, and sometimes about Canada. Usually, they just don't talk about Canada because nobody cares about us. We're so, we're so small in terms of population. Um, it's like, yeah, our countries are the size of your fucking continent. Like, we have way more room. You know, like, it literally, for us to go from, like, one province to the other or from one state to the other, it's like you driving, like, seven countries over, right? So, yeah, we need, like, the it's designed around cars because we need it to be designed around cars. You, we, we, no country in the world has the amount of money it would take for us to set up rail systems absolutely everywhere on the level that they have in Europe. Transportation, a 12-lane arterial road, Jesus Christ. And so this will be our segue to... Desert Futurama. Dubai's urbanism in general is just complete bonkers. It's kind of its own little bubble, really. A strange little rich people's dystopia in the desert. Take a look at this arrangement. Two sections of skyscrapers separated by a 20-something lane freeway and behind it a bunch of cul-de-sac suburbs and golf courses. It's this strange mixture between Futurama and evil Los Angeles. And this just <laughs> makes me feel so frustrated because all that money and all that power, they could have done so much more and so much better than this. The way I understand it, the main motive motive behind building all this flashy stuff was to try and increase tourism, to help the Emirates economy transition away from oil revenues, which is, you know... Okay, so this is their economics. So crude petroleum on its own is 28% of their economy. Um, and then obviously you have like petroleum, gas, refined petroleum, all this stuff. I didn't realize they had so much gold diamond and diamonds there. Jewelry makes sense. Um, polymers make sense. Most of that's oil-based anyway. I can't even read what that is. It's so tiny. It says something equipment. Um, raw materials. Yeah, so like, if you look at like these, I can't really read what this is, but if you, just these three alone is like 60 to 75% of their economy and it's raw materials, right? It's actually kind of interesting because most of the time when you, when you look at like the way the world's structured in terms of economy, um, for the most part, the now obviously they have jewelry included in this but for the most part countries that are producing natural resources don't have a lot of money um usually you know the countries that produce natural resources are the poorest then it goes to somewhere where they do like low uh i, I think it's low it's called low labor inputs i believe is what the official term is for it. but basically it's like really simple stuff that can mostly be done by machines um, and you just stand in a factory and do boring fucking menial tasks all day. That's what most middle income countries are. And then most rich countries have usually a, those as well, but they also have, uh, high end manufacturing where it takes a lot more, um, 
you, a lot more intelligence, a lot more education. Um, so yeah, it's kind of interesting that they're so rich, but they're in many ways set up like a third world country, like in terms of like what their economy actually is. Fair enough. But then why not build something truly unique? Something that isn't just a big dumb tower of glass and steel, or a couple dozen suburban streets on sinking sandbanks, or gigantic malls or golf courses. Imagine a city with full-on historic Arabic Golden Age architecture with modern elements. Man, okay, this oh. is concept art from Diablo 3, but you get the... Oh, that looks so gorgeous, though. I actually... Uh, this part I kind of agree with. I wish more countries would... Like, oh, I love high gothic and uh, neo gothic and all that stuff. I wish more English countries would like do the the high gothic and the Renaissance uh, and neo classical and like all of this stuff. Like, I, I wish we would do that. And same with like other countries and like their version of that. So like obviously for like um, you know the, the Arabs in the Middle East, it would be like this kind of stuff. But every, everything now just looks the exact same. You can literally go to like a city in Canada or a city in um, you know somewhere in Asia or a city somewhere in Europe or in South America, or it doesn't matter. Um, it'll look the exact same. It'll be some modern, gross looking, either brutalist architecture or whatever the new thing is with like steel and glass. It just all looks like shit. Uh, I honestly, I, this part I agree with. I wish a hundred percent, I wish countries would like lean into their culture more when they're building buildings and like do this kind of stuff. You know, whatever your historical culture is, whether you know, you're know you Germanic and it's like some kind of Gothic or, you know, Neo-Gothic or High Gothic or whatever. Um, you know, a lot of the Latins with like the Neoclassical or the Classical and all that stuff. Uh, you know, obviously this for, you know, Islamic countries and Arabic countries. Um, I, I really wish countries would lean more into their history. I think it looks gorgeous. The idea. I have seen skyscrapers, malls, suburbs, urban freeways, or golf courses before. What I haven't seen is a historical or at least historicist Arab city. That would be a great way of spending all those petrol dollars, or at least a better way, I would say. And that might even attract a more quality. E even the fucking the one big. Uh, you, you know what I find kind of f fascinating in like a weird way is they built that one big clock tower. At. Uh, the Hajj? Is it, is it called the Hajj? Oh no, they perform the Hajj. Uh, Mecca. Mecca, that's what it's called. Um, they built that one big clock tower at Mecca. It literally looks like, I don't even know what you would call it, but it's like a mix between like brutalist architecture and gothic architecture. And it's like so weird because it's like, okay, you have this mix of like Germanic and I don't know, I guess Soviet. It, who made brutalism? Was it the Soviets originally? Um, architecture in like the most religious spot in your in your religion you would assume you would like try to do something that's like your religion right like something like well i guess this is actually very byzantine fucking roman era but um you know like try to do something very arab and middle eastern looking like very you know proud of your culture um but no they made like this like really modern looking thing i don't know their money. Crowd instead of the oligarchs, trust fund babies, and novoerish idiots. Okay, that's a bit unfair, but Dubai right now is not exactly a haven of intellectualism, so to speak. By the way, did you know that only 10% of the Emirates population is actually Emirati? I did. The other 90% <coughs> being immigrants and expats. <coughs> well, actually, they're all immigrants. It's just that white people came up with this word expat, so they don't have to call themselves immigrants abroad because that word is reserved for brown people. Speak. Uh, uh no, so t an expat and an immigrant are different things. Uh, uh, technically, they're all expats um because i don't think you're if i'm not mistaken you're not even allowed to immigrate there an immigrant is somebody who like moves there and, acqu and acquires or attempts to acquire citizenship an expat is somebody who is living there temporarily for work right there that's a very important difference right an expat is planning on going back to their country eventually an immigrant is planning on staying um and i'm pretty sure because of dubai's laws they're all technically expats you can go which And this right here is my biggest problem with Dubai, the Emirates, and the Gulf states in general. All that luxury, wealth, and opulence you see all around you in Dubai rests on a mountain of human tragedies. Poor people from third world countries such as India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh are lured in by work agencies promising high wages and stable employment. People take loans from friends and family so they can cover the costs of their travel and work visa, usually more than $2,000, despite Emirati law requiring the companies to pay for those. Upon arrival, workers' passports are often confiscated, essentially trapping them inside the country. Workers are forced to work up to... So that's fascinating to me, because aren't all the companies there owned by the royal family? Like, maybe I just don't understand. Like, I thought the, the, the royal family basically owned everything there. So, the... 
maybe I'm just wrong, but is, does that mean the royal family is just making these laws and then ignoring them anyway? Like, why even make the laws if <laughs> you're literally the only one they apply to and then you ignore them? <laughs> it seems kind of stupid, but I don't know. Maybe there are other companies there. Maybe they're talking about, like, uh, companies that are working there that are from another country. I'm not entirely sure. That's just, yeah, seems kind of odd. 12-hour shifts up to seven days a week for $175 per month on average. Wage arrears are common, many workers not receiving money for months on end. To quote from a Human Rights Watch report, the impact on workers whose wages are withheld for even one month is very serious. They immediately fall into arrears on the debt they are recruiting agencies in their home countries. They incur additional interest and they are unable to send money home for their families who depend on their income earned in the Emirates. In some cases, the non-payment of wages means that workers do not have money to buy food or basic goods and end up borrowing money just to survive. The COVID epidemic only made things worse. That and uh, so, so it's, ba it's basically like it's like halfway between slavery and forced, and uh, it's halfway between slavery and indentured servitude because technically they're supposed to be going there as employees, but then because of the debt they accrue, they basically end up being indentured servants. But they kind of force them to get that debt, so it literally is. It's like halfway between like slavery and indentured servitude crashing left many workers jobless. Consequently, many were abandoned by their former employers. They now spend their days in half-abandoned worker camps on the outskirts of the city, only volunteers and their food donations standing between them and starvation. A Guardian article quotes a construction worker called Hassan. He says, Guests on and off visit and give something, but when nobody comes, we have to starve. We have nothing. All this just a few kilometers away from the seven-star hotels, the world's tallest skyscraper, the world's biggest mall, and the golf courses for rich foreigners. According to the estimates of the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative, between 2012 and mid-2018, more than 10 Indian workers died in golf countries every single day. God damn. These are just the Indians. In addition to that, a Jezebel article goes on to say that at least two Indians commit suicide every single week in the Emirates. A number, they say, that is simultaneously both shocking yet unsurprising. They show photos of the accommodation the workers have to endure, unfit even for animals. A harsh contrast to Instagram's parallel universe. They call this system modern slavery, and I'm afraid they are correct. Yeah. This, and the previously mentioned issues, but especially this, is why I hate the Emirates and especially fucking hate Dubai. The city of Dubai is a fucking joke, one that's unusually cruel. It's a twisted parody of everything wrong with modern humanity. I'll leave you with a poem from Bertolt Brecht, written in 1935, titled Questions from a Worker, who reads Who built Thebes of the Seven Gates? In the books you will read the names of kings. Did the kings haul up the lumps of rock? And Babylon, many times demolished, who raised it up so many times? In what houses of gold glittering Lima did its builders live? Where, the evening that the Great Wall of China was finished, did the masons go? Great Rome is full of triumphal arches. Who erected them? Over whom did the Caesars triumph? Had Byzantium, much praised in song, only palaces for its inhabitants? Even in fabled Atlantis, the night that the ocean engulfed it, the drowning still cried out for their slaves. The young Alexander conquered India. Was he alone? Caesar defeated the Gauls. Did he not even have a cook with him? Philip of Spain wept when his armada went down. Was he the only one to weep? Frederick II won the Seven Years' War. Who else won it? Every page a victory. Who cooked the feast for the victors? Every ten years a great man. Who paid the bill? So many reports, so many questions. Honestly, <clears throat> good poem. Um, you know, I do think we definitely underappreciate workers quite a bit, but also I know there's like kind of this like view that like we, um, I don't know, I guess you could call it like the anti great man of history view. And I think that's also ridiculous. You know, you kind of need like a common ground. Yes, you definitely need like, you know, the workers are the ones physically doing a lot of the labor. I mean, most of the labor. Um, but I, I still, I think there is a, a place for great man history to, to a certain degree. I know that's not what he's talking about, but that's something that, we, that comes up on this channel quite often is like the, because we watch a lot of historical stuff and a lot of like historians over the, I would say like the last 10, 15 years really hate great man history. And I strongly 
disagree with that hatred towards it. I definitely think it, you know, in the past it was overplayed and there should be, you know, focus on like the workers and the commoners and all of this stuff. But there definitely is a place for great man history because it's undeniable that some people just through charisma or, you know, uh, political power, you know, whatever it is, whatever gets them to the top. There's some people that just push the world forward that no one else at the time could have. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm sorry the video took such a dark turn in the end, but as I was looking up stuff for Dubai for the video, I kept encountering more and more just alarming the fucked up information. Like, Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching once again, and please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and do check out my Patreon tiers. Link in... Yeah, so I really like that video. I, actually, I agree with, I would say, like 95, 97% of it. The only thing I really disagree with is his, his hatred of suburbs. That is such a European thing because they have such a small, compact continent that's like, you know, not, I wouldn't say overpopulated. Um, there's still lots of land there. Uh, but it, it's just so densely populated compared to like other places that it is kind of weird that in Dubai you have it because, you know, it's obviously like just a city. Uh, and I don't know how densely populated it is around there, so it seems kind of weird that you can't have more sprawl. Um, but, you know, in, in the Americas, like, the, the idea... I hear this all the time from Europeans, and it's such a brain-dead thing to say because they don't understand how our continent is different from theirs. Yes, in in Europe, it's everything small and compact, and you have, like, 800 million people or something like that. I, I, I'll, I'll Google what the population of Europe is. I think it's somewhere around 800 million people. Um... 746 million is according to Google is the population of Europe uh, as of 2018. So it's about five years old, but so, so let's say 750 million. Okay. So you have 750 million people in a continent. that's like the size of Canada, right? Probably smaller actually. How, how big is uh 10.5 million square kilometers? What's Canada nine? I think Canada uh, square kilometers. Yeah, Canada's 9.9. .9. So can't, your, your, your entire continent is like the size of the country I live in. And you have almost 30 or, yeah, like 30 times the population, right? Like, obviously, you <clears throat> have the ability to have this, like, vast infrastructure of railways and stuff. And you can have all this stuff. But in Canada, you really can't have that, right? You have... Every major city is like six, seven, eight hours away driving, right, from the next major city, right? We need to have it designed to be based around cars because it just doesn't make sense from a financial perspective to have railways going absolutely everywhere. Well, we have railways, but like railways, um, I don't know, we, pedestrian railways, uh, civilian railways, whatever you want to call them, right? It doesn't make sense for us to have them going everywhere. And I, I hear this from Europeans all the time. And they're like, oh, you hate the suburbs. Hate how, like, America's built around cars and Canada's built around cars. It's like, that's because you live in, like, such a densely populated area. It, <laughs> it's, it's just different. Like, <laughs> uh, But I do agree with the, I hate the cookie-cutter houses. And I do wish that more um, grand architecture, I guess would be the best word for it. Like, whether it be skyscrapers or, you know, um, amphitheaters or... Um, you know, stadiums would look more like the traditional culture of that place. Everything looks like either like brutalism or I don't even know what you would call the new architecture style. There's probably a name for it. I just don't know it. Uh, but like where everything is just steel and glass, it can look good, but most of the time it just looks like shit. And I wish people would embrace their, you know, their cultures, like, you know, the Latin countries and the, and the, the ro romance countries of Southern Europe, you know, have like that classical style, cla you know, classical cla uh, classical neoclassical all that stuff you know all the germanic countries embrace like gothic and high gothic and neo-gothic and i would love to see more architecture like that but unfortunately i think because of costs people just aren't going to do it um or very rarely are going to do it but anyway let me know what you think below like comment subscribe i'll see you guys in the next one